If Canada wants to help uh, refugees, we should love ourselves first. Canada is a small capacity nation. You just have a small stomach. Do not imagine you can you can eat a lot. Otherwise, you will bring the fight from another nation to Canada. I am reliving the nightmare, the changing of name of streets, the changing the history, destroying family values. All of that I've lived through, and I finally left. And I come here again and starting all over again. You know, we have forgotten about what we unite over, and rather we focus on what divides us. Just step forward, Canadians. We need to. That's, this is our duty. We have our forefathers who fought for our freedoms in this country. This is a hot button topic these days, immigration, and ultimately the identity of said country, and in this case, Canada. But as we can see in the news and around the Western world today, there's a lot going on that is kind of causing a breaking point. In just one small sample size, in the UK right now, there is a lot of violence going on between both the white and the immigrant population attacks, assaults, and arrests, riots, leading to a place ultimately for the entire population that they may not be able to come back from. And even myself, during the filming of my videos, I've come across instances, though not on the same scale, of situations that easily could have led to violence. Fucking go! Get out of here! Oh, you're gonna kick me out! You're gonna kick me out! Now! Now what? Yeah, now what? Come to me! Come to me! Buddy, I'm Canadian. I own this. We are Canadians. So because of this, I wanted to go out and I did this on Canada Day to talk to immigrants and to talk to Canadians on their opinions on what's going on. What does it mean to be a Canadian? What does being a Canadian mean to them? Immigration, obviously. What does immigration mean in its current state? What it's doing? How do immigrants perceive our current state of immigration, ultimately the overall direction of the country, and if we can find common ground so that we can move forward. And as always, please share in the comments, what are your opinions on immigration itself? Also on the current form of immigration and the quality of life in the countries that seem to be getting the most immigrants. Obviously, these discussions are very important, so I'd love to hear from you down below. For you yourself, when you think of Canada and what it means to be a Canadian, what does it mean to be a Canadian to you? Oh my god, everything. <laughs> everything I have is because of Canada. Um, I moved here in the year 2000. My family and I, we fled the Islamic theocracy in Iran. Um, so, you know, I lived and breathed um, under a dictatorship where there was no freedom, no democracy. So Canada means everything to me. The education I have, the opportunities I got, everything that I have, I owe it to Canada and Canadians because, you know, they opened their arms and their homes to me and my family and accepted me. So acceptance, that's what Canada is. Tolerance, respect. So yes, we have a Canadian culture and that's something that I adopted. And I think that it's so important that uh, we unite again, because that's what I saw when I moved here. I saw unity, and it no longer exists. And there is so much labeling, there is so much hate going on. Canada is broken. We need to find a way to just, you know, get ourselves back to what we were. We need to be a united Canada. Well, growing up in Canada, the values for Canada to me is that uh, it's, a, it's a nation founded by immigrants, right, and it has a, somewhat of a colorful past. But if you look back in society, like everywhere around the world, everyone was conquered, right? But every, all races were, were enslaved. Whether it's a double-edged sword to bring immigrants here or not, right, that's kind of like the identity of Canada for me is that as a nation founded on immigrants and, and what I like about it is that you have different cultures from all over coming to Canada and you could actually find out the similarities. You may not agree on everything, Right, but the main thing is to build a relationship with people and find out the commonalities between our cultures and you actually find out that we're not that much different from each other. But the globalists and the people in power using the, the, the skin color to divide people. Right, so. Well, Canada was originally formed on Christian values, which they've done their best to erase. And as we have more and more people from other countries come in bringing in their stuff, it cha it's changing the atmosphere of what Canada is. It's not the same as when I was a child. Not saying that it should be the same as when I was a child either, but 
we can erase ourselves so much that we can't even p protect ourselves. Yeah, I would say that people are kind of making other things their god and following other things that are not necessarily going to build up a country, but we're, we'll just tear it down in the end. Well, I would like to say that Canada stands for freedom, where we can freely live our lives without interference from government. A country where you can actually come and you can make an honest living and be able to take care of your family without going into debt, buying million dollar homes that are not worth that. Um, yeah, I would like it to be a country where you can actually make a living without working 12 hours a day, six, seven days a week. And it's, if we don't have that, then what's the point really? <laughs> you just turn into a slave, so yeah. It was a land of hope. It was somewhere that would provide me with freedom, a prosperous life if I work and try hard. I, I wouldn't fall in any category, which now I'm falling in a category. I'm, I'm called a, a minority, what a female from a minority ethnic background. I didn't come for that. I came to be a Canadian and I took an oath. I took my citizenship oath. But the society is not the same. I, in, in my view, it's a, it's a great, it's been a great decline. Uh, it's to some extent unrecognizable. I did come for a Western culture, that I knew the values and I knew the flaws. There, there obviously every place has their own flaws, but I preferred it and I thought this is something I'd rather have for myself and my children. Well, we are basically based on British common law. British values or which some people say, oh, it's colonization, whatever, but I came for it. So I have no shame. I am not gonna apologize for being Canadian. I think that people really don't understand what makes up our identity. I think we don't realize the things that are all the same about us that really set us apart. Even when you look down south across the border, because I think the identity crisis Canada has is how do we differentiate ourselves from Americans because we're perhaps the two most similar cultures in the world. I think our identity for some reason got reduced to this silly cheerleading about um, uh, poutine and maple syrup and uh, free health care because that sets us apart from the states, sure, but doesn't set us apart from, from Europe, for example. I don't know, it seemed like our identity was those, was those three things. Of the, the free health care um, systems in the Western world, ours is amongst the worst, and especially now it's, it's abysmal. Again, because of mass immigration and it not being, uh, having the capacity, which has made it even worse. Um, but that was our identity. Really, our identity is, is cheese and gravy on fries. Like, come on, like, we have actual principles that that we all, that all bind us together, but we're so used to them that we don't realize that they set us apart and that it's, it's who we are. So I think we need to rally around um, those basic principles and values of, of freedom and, and respect for others and love all, above all else and not let that become, we're just so polite that we will never expect anything of everyone. We're, we're timid, we're anything. afraid. Like there's a difference between kindness and weakness and we've deceived ourselves into into being weak thinking that we're being kind respect thy neighbor be patriotic don't be scared to be a proud canadian um, i've seen over the last four years our identity being crushed our culture being crushed and uh, it has to stop um, our children are suffering as well um, you know their jobs are being taken which companies are putting their foot forward and actually paying, the government's paying these immigrants to come in and work at a lower rate, which is very, at the end of the day, it's slave labor in my opinion. Um, this country means everything to me. It, it, and I've seen the slide for the last four years. I, I think Canadians should be proud. Being Canadian means being able to respect each other's beliefs and, and, and thoughts and, and whatnot and have the freedom of speech to say what we need to say. We've got the government who's pretty much censoring every big name that's talking about anything that's going on in the world. I mean, I'm, I'm a, you can't see other you know, sources of uh, news, which tells you one thing, that this country is under siege. It's being invaded and uh, it's, it's looking more and more like communism as we go along. So as you can see, a lot of different answers, you know, there are some through lines and commonalities, but you know, even for me, I'll speak personally, one of the biggest reasons I also made this video is because sometimes I find that I struggle to define and identify what it means to be a Canadian. I mean, my father was an immigrant. He was from South America, from Guyana. So my father was an immigrant, but me, myself, I grew up here and my whole life, I guess maybe I'm in that pocket where this, these big changes have started to happen. So 
I myself have struggled to define what it is and what it means to be a Canadian. And for me, myself anyway, I find that maybe that's the issue. If there's nothing that we can root ourselves to and, you know, rally around and, and no values that we can all agree upon, it's very easy for things to move and goalposts to be changed and, you know, for things to fall apart. So I went forward and I asked the people as well, is it a problem maybe that we can't define it? Is it a problem that maybe we all think Canada is something a little different? And if so, why is that a problem or maybe why it's not a problem? Do you feel that because Canada maybe doesn't have like a rooted identity, does that make it easier to divide people when there isn't a core set of values if, if we can't if we can't think of those things? Is that well, I think that we're, I think the reason why we're divided because because um, even like the states will have you can look at the United States and they have like they have these core values and they're more you know national Patriotism, they're more nationalistic yeah. than than Canadians but they're still divided and because I mean if you're gonna bring in immigrants and stuff right you, people are gonna get divided I think core values should be uh, should be come from God right. Uh, morality comes from God. So if we, if we focused on those, and I know that even that will be the divisive to different uh, cultures, but you plant the seeds, then God takes care of the rest. And if everyone did that, everybody shares, like be a good person and stuff like that, then we all get along. It's good to take, you know, um, uh, I could say pride, but I don't always say, they always say pride before the fall. It's not, it's good to be, you know, proud of your country, right? But I welcome all backgrounds and stuff like that, all flags. Right? Because when Canadian, being Canadian is not just a piece of cloth. To me, everything comes from God. I pride towards God first. It's, it's our country. We live in it. As I said, I'm a duty-bound person. I live in this country. But if we're living here and we decide that this is my home, you protect your home. So in, in a smaller scale, if you actually have a house or you live in a home, don't you take care of it? Are you going to say, what is the value of my house? Like, put it in words of what I'm standing for? It's my home support the country you live in or live in the country you support. And I think it makes a lot of sense. Not that I don't want to support countries who are in trouble or they need the help. I think that's, that's, being, um, that's what a human being should be. Now, if I was living somewhere else, I would be as dedicated. If I don't like it, I'll leave it. I'll go somewhere else. To me, um, I don't think it's a detriment to not to be able to necessarily describe it in words because a lot of things you can't describe in words. It's the feel. It says you get up in the morning, I'm breathing this air, I'm walking these streets. My kids were born here. That's the country I live in. So what do you do? You try to defend it and you try to take care of it the best you can. Well, uh, first of all, I think our issue is, is bringing people in that don't share our values is, is what's destroying our culture and identity. You know, um, at the end of the day, we are a Christian nation. Um, if you look at Europe, Look at all the Christian nations. The exact same thing is happening in the UK, in London, in Ireland, in Spain, in Western Italy, world. in the Western world, right? So is that a coincidence or is that uh, deliberate? Canadians, we need to stand up. We need to stop being scared. This is our country. We need to preserve it. Our children depend on it. it they will not know what freedom is in this country if we don't be the people who stand up for it. Just step forward, Canadians. We need to. That's, this is our duty. We have our forefathers who fought for our freedoms in this country. So maybe it matters, maybe it doesn't matter. But one thing I just really want to make clear before we keep going on in this video is that when you hear the word Canadian or, you know, American or what have you, I think people immediately go to focus on, you know, a white person. And for me, a Canadian means being somebody that just upholds a Canadian value system, if we even have one. It's not really the way you look. As you can see in this video, there's, you know, Persians, Middle Eastern, uh, black people. There's going to be an Asian lady that's going to come up in the video fairly soon here. All Canadian people all wanting to maintain or move forward in a direction and take care of what that one woman said is her home. But before we get into the immigration topic, there were two ladies that really wanted to speak about labels. And I do think, you know, the labeling and subcategorizing of people is an issue in an identity of a nation. If we don't have shared values or we're struggling to define these shared values, and on top of that, we're you know, subcategorizing everybody on every vector and metric, makes things even more difficult and I, that I think plays a really big role into this situation and issues that we face today. I, I don't know a country who does not have a dark past. 
Like that's in, everywhere in the world there's something. I'm not saying that's justifiable. I'm just saying people make mistakes and they're, they're of dark past. Do we celebrate our goodness? I don't think so. Like unity is our strength. Like breaking things, people up into tiny groups, that, is, that can never be strength. That's divide and conquer. So I, I really refuse to be put in a category. I was deprived of certain rights in my home country because I was a woman. Like there I could probably fight and lose my life. Here you fight, well you don't fight because they're pitying you. Like I, that, that's an insult that I can't get to a place on my own because now you have to serve me or just help me out because I fall in the female from a minority ethnic background, that's an insult. A lot of forms, they have those boxes. Do you fall in this category? I mean, what on earth? Mm. Why does it matter? What happened to competency? Let's say labels, you know, your gender, your race, like myself, I'm Middle Eastern woman uh, of color, let's say. And, you know, we have forgotten about what we unite over and rather we focus on what divides us. That's, that's the way that you conquer countries. That's the way that you conquer societies, um, by taking away the patriotism. So once people do not unite, and once they no longer identify as Canadian, you take away that patriotism, and all of a sudden you have all these little groups of people that, you know, they no longer have a collective identity, and the country can slowly be infiltrated. Especially if you bring in like um, if you bring in a, a, like a big Muslim population, right? They identify with the God, Allah. But they bring him here. They identify with him first. So again, it's kind of hard. Like, and and what's the Muslims' values, right? They prioritize family. They prioritize their God. You don't see Muslims rushing to the the abortion clinics. I don't want to hate. I don't want. I don't want. You know. I don't, I'm not going to hate them and stuff, right? But you're not going to beat a god with a flag. It doesn't matter how many how many flags you have. They worship a god, and then that's why they that's why they're procreating. That's why they're not going to abortion clinics. That's why they increase the numbers. So if you're if you're Canadian and you value family stuff, have kids. You can't blame them for like for having the numbers when they're when they're having kids. So if we if Canada want to help. Uh, refugees, um, I think that is good hard. But the first thing, we should love ourselves first. Canada is a small capacity nation. We do not have that capacity. You just have a small stomach. Do not imagine you can, you can eat a lot. Do not do over. Otherwise, you will bring the fight from another nation to Canada. Like for Muslim, if they do not accept Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus Christ, they may, they may be a danger to fight with the local Christians. And the Muslim, they also fight with Hinduism. And you know, in the, in the east of Toronto and the west of Toronto, like in the Etobicoke, Minnesota, and Brampton, there are lots of uh, India communities. They believe in Hinduism, different, different religions. They are already fight in their original country. They maybe bring the fight to Canada and you cannot control it. So why Chinese people want to immigrate to Canada? Because we think Canada is a, a, a nation of good value. So that's why when you come to here, you must respect the, 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 the local value, the original value. You cannot say, I come here to change you, right? We do not want Canada to be like Europe. Have you seen like videos like from Europe? Like in the German, in France, like people, they, they forming like army, not, not the political army, but like for people, young guys, like 20 years old, they cover their, their body with black. They don't like people to see, but they holding the flag, they will fight for France. Mm. It's like a civil war. It's a, it's a taste of a civil war. And that creates a lot of problems. When you have people coming, so many people coming here um, that don't have to integrate into Canada because they came here with so many other people that uh, they form their own communities. Mm. It's, it's really damaging, it creates a lot of tension. And how are we supposed to have society if we can't even talk to each other? You know, it's one of those basic things. We had an immigration system before, we, we made that clear. Um, and now the way we do immigration where it's so fraudulent, it's just rife with fraud from people buying LMI, LMIAs, fake LMIA jobs, running those scams to, to come here, people coming to fake schools that are diploma mills, and a lot of real schools that are starting to turn into diploma mills where they don't actually learn anything. It's all just a farce, a way to buy a ticket into Canada. Um, and then it's supposed to be on a temporary basis, but then the whole idea is to find a way to stay, abuse our other systems. Um, how can I claim asylum now that I've, now that I've gotten here? Um, even though they have no legitimate claim to such things. So when we allow these 
systems to be so rampantly abused, so much fraud. This is what we get. Now, when we're talking about the average Canadian, not the extremes on either end, the majority of Canadians feel that the current state of immigration is the issue, not immigrants. But the majority of Canadians feel that immigration in its current form is destroying an already collapsing system. Canadians that, you know, are both born here and immigrated here years ago are already struggling, whether that's with healthcare, whether that's with finding work, whether that's with affording an apartment or a home, there's homelessness, there's drugs, there is so much going on. And in the developed world, Canada, when you adjust the percentages, is bringing in the most immigrants per its population. So what's gonna happen when you have a suffering system and suffering infrastructure and you overload it with more people and you're not doing anything to bolster the already collapsing system is you're gonna have a quality of life collapse. And that's what Canadians are seeing. So people are upset at what immigration is doing. The majority of Canadians see that there is a problem and it's more so the system itself versus the people. And you'll see what I'm saying in the next set of interviews here. Canada is broken, we have to fix the, we have to fix the government. Um, I'll say this, like the whole thing about Canada and being a corp and being, a, you know, all the corruption and stuff. The problem is that people don't realize that Canada is a corporation. Then other countries is just business as usual. It's a transaction. So people don't realize that. That's why, that's why Trudeau hasn't gotten arrested. It's, a, it's, a, it's, 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 it's putting out there to make people all like, oh my God, it's a, the focus on these things. But it's business as usual. People have to wake up to that fact. Politicians and stuff will be corrupted and stuff and they're just doing business. You know, we have to uh, come together and uh, focus on self-governing ourselves so we don't need them, right? Once we govern ourselves and we trust each other and we can wait each other and stuff, then we don't need the government. Muscle you out of doing whatever that you should be able to do under God. So it's just to keep the government accountable and to keep them on the toes and waking people up. If you see a wave happening, you see a wave happening in the States, you see a wave happening in Europe, in Argentina, with a kind of a, a right wing, you know, swing. And that's gonna happen here as well with Pierre Polyev. I mean, at the end of the day, we do have the illusion of choice here in Canada. Uh, uh, it's one or the other. Um, out of 40 million people, which, I don't know, me or you could probably represent this country uh, just a lot, as just as good, right? So at the end of the day, it, it's, um, it's something that's happening across the world. And it's, it's a really, I'm proud to see people more and more waking up to what's happening. And, and that's what it's going to take. No politician is going to come and save us here. It's not, it's not happening, all right? So we need to be the people who actually stand up and do the change that we want to see. Canadians need to speak up and they need to speak loud, they need to speak clear. Uh, don't be afraid to be labeled. Uh, don't let don't let all of these, I don't even know, like these standards that all of a sudden have, you know, been pushed into our society to push you in a corner. Uh, so speak up, speak loud. And another thing is we need to um, hold our politicians accountable. I think one of the issues is that Unfortunately, a lot of Canadians have loyalty to parties, but the parties do not have loyalty to the people. So, you know, it doesn't matter anymore if you're a liberal, NDP, or conservative. These parties step on their own principles because at the end of the day, they just want to do what's right for the party. Uh, they want to do, you know, whatever it takes to bring the votes in. And they don't care about, you know, what the citizens think. They don't care about what the members think. Uh, they just want to get themselves in that higher position to get the power. And, they, that, and that's why we always see they come into office and they go back on their words. And that's an issue. So I think Canadians need to understand that we are the ones who hold the power. We are the ones who give parties the power. We are the ones who give them donations. So we have the power. We just have to wake up and realize that we have the power. So we need to stand together, we need to unite, and we need to speak up. And I think that way we can actually change Canada and not even go back to what it was, but go forward and make it better. You know, Canada, wake up. That's all I have to say, wake up and, uh, you know, unite. The way to change thing, we need to stop bringing in so many illegal immigrants and letting people just stay just because they're here. We gotta look out for our own people first. 
and we need to get a smaller government. They're too big, they have too much power, they get away with way too much, and they make themselves out to be gods and people follow them. Well, they shouldn't have any control over the media and they should have a lot less power. Their job is to serve us as the people, not subjugate us and use us. I think what we have is a suffering nation whose infrastructure is struggling to keep pace with a population growth. You have a group of people that have lived here, both you know, first, second, third generation and, and new immigrants, that struggle to define core values of what it means to be a Canadian. A huge influx of new people that are being promised something that doesn't exist. That's something that I don't feel gets talked about enough. As an immigrant, you're coming to a place with the impression that it's gonna give you a better life. People are coming here, you know, and Canada is, is renowned for being a easy country in the G7 to get a visa and realizing it's not what they were promised. And, you know, maybe they invested all of their life savings to get here and now they're stuck. And we're seeing an issue of division and identity politics and people struggling to pay for their groceries and afford homes and, you know, a, a clash of what it is to be here and be a Canadian and what people think they deserve. And it's a perfect storm and it's leading us into a direction that we already see playing out in Europe. And that's, that's my biggest fear and my biggest hope is that we don't get there because I, I feel like most people in Canada probably think it would never get there. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of people in Europe probably felt the same way. But in order for a country to be healthy, adequate immigration is needed. And adequate is the word, right? You don't want to have over anything because it is not going to coincide with healthy growth. It's like a business, right? If your business is already failing, pumping more into a business when it doesn't have a model that's successful is just going to cause more issues. And that's what we're seeing in Canada right now. We have a failing business and we're bringing in more and more people that are taking and trying to get a piece and it's diluting what is here for everyone, immigrants and, you know, multi-generational Canadians included. I hope that people see this and speak up like everybody was saying, we all do need to speak up and make it normal to be able to have these conversations and not have them get divisive. I hope by seeing Canadians that look different, sound different and come from different places, speaking about the same things opens people's eyes to see that we do have common goals and common values that we can unite over to take the country forward in a positive direction and hopefully bring a better future for other generations in Canada to what it was for immigrants that came here in the 50s and 60s and 70s and, and you know take it into the future and make it even better. So I'll leave the video there. And as always, I hope everybody enjoyed and found it helpful and be safe and well. And until the next one, everybody. And I finally left and I come here again and starting all over again. There's no better place to go. So if we don't take care of this, this will be this exact same thing.